now in, introduce uh, engineer Mr. Uh, Madhavi Ziyari. Uh, Mr. Ziyari has a degree in civil engineering from Oxford Polytechnic UK, postgraduate in water resources engineering from North East London Polytechnic. He has also an MSc in bridge engineering from University of Surrey and he has uh, more than 37 years experience in the field of civil and structural engineering, uh, both in Iran and here. Uh, so uh, I will ask uh, Mr. Ziari to talk about uh, the uh, engineering aspects of the project. Thank you very much, Mr. Ziari, please start. Yeah, before I start, I would like to- uh, your, 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 uh, uh, microphone is off. Your microphone. Yeah, before I start, I would like to thank my daughter for putting this presentation together for ease of understanding so, for everybody. everybody. So, so we put uh, so we like put, a lady's uh, voice like over, lady it, voice so over it so people can understand better. People can understand. I just wanted to um, thank my daughter. To, thanks my daughter who's sitting there. Mm -hmm. You share, please share the share, sound. As share the sound. As you, and sound, and you, and sound. you don't want sound. No, no, chill. Don't want sound. So, so, chill. Chill. so, so no. uh, share sound. Share sound. Share sound. Yes. Iran Hope or Omid Iran Project is based on the sustainable development proposed by the United Nations, along with forty-four other important points related to our country. This project is designed to solve the problem of water shortage, and also, food shortages, together with environmental problems in Iran. More importantly, it is designed to solve the problem of the Iranian people are facing now and future generations. After this project is completed, Iran not only is self-sufficient in water, but also can be self-sufficient in agricultural products, and more importantly can export food and play a significant part to solve the food shortage the world will face within 30 years. Because of shortage of the food that world has to face within 30 years, projects similar to this project will be inevitable in another part of the world in future. Ganat. Today, our country is facing the problem of water shortage. If we talk about the water problem and water shortage, we must talk about the Garnat. A Garnat is a system for transporting water from an aquifer or water well to the surface through an underground aqueduct. It is powered by gravity and once built, have low operation and maintenance costs. This system of water supply allows water to be transported over long distances in hot dry climates and without much loss of water to evaporation. Historically Iranians knew how to construct a garnet and also develop an efficient local water management system. The first garnet estimated was built around 800 BC to resolve the water shortage and with it came local water management. It is believed this is still in use today. The longest garnet in the world is called Zarch, in Yazd province of Iran, which is estimated to have been built between 2000 to 2500 years ago, with a length of 100 kilometers. To this day it still supplies water to 800 agricultural families. In this photo, you can see that the Gasabe Garnat in Gonabad, in Khorasan province, and after 2,700 years is still supplying water to more than 2,000 hectares of agricultural lands. In this slide, you will see how ancient Iranians understood how to identify the correct earth profile and the conditions that would be a suitable environment to construct the Garnat. The Garnat was dug by first, 
digging a mother well upstream, and then followed by a serious vertical wells downstream, then connecting these wells to one another with a suitable slope. This allows water to be transported over long distances in hot dry climates and without loss of much of water to evaporation. The significance of Garnat is the levels of precipitation, delivering a flow with only gradual variations from wet to dry years. Therefore, it does not damage the environment or have significant impact to the groundwater level. Before I go further, I hereby present this charter. This project is based on the knowledge of our ancestors, that our forefathers left it for us, we must leave it for future generations. If our ancestors were able to solve the country's water problem by constructing the Garnat with effective local water management, with today's technology and the vast amount of research and development in the field of engineering and science, we must therefore be able to solve the water shortages of Iran and probably use the same method to solve the water problem of the world. We will therefore show you this project is achievable to sustain life for future generations. The aim of the Omid Iran project is to bring water from the Persian Gulf to the Iran's dry plateau and solve the water shortage problem. Simultaneously, turning deserts or wasteland into agricultural, industrial, and tourism, with an approximate area of 300,280 km squared. Finally, by connecting this waterway to the Caspian Sea to control the fluctuation of this sea and maintaining the sea level for the future generations. According to reliable international scientific research, it estimates annually this sea losses 7 cm through evaporation. Therefore, by maintaining the sea level we could keep this sea for future generations. Bearing in mind with an approximate distance of 1,400 km, from the Persian Gulf to the Caspian Sea. In these two graphs. The bottom graph in 2021, shows the increasing population of the world. Today the world population has reached 7.8 billion. The food produced on our planet today is not enough to feed the world's population. We all know that many are hungry, especially in our own country, many people are starving because of the shortage and very high cost of food. According to the same graph of the United Nations, in 2050, world's population will reach about 10 billion, you can guess what changes hunger will bring in different countries of the world particularly poorer nation especially non-producer of food at that time. In the graph above, according to the world population growth, our country's population will reach more than 103 million. If we do not act to control our country's population growth now. Sadly, we cannot predict a good future for our country. Today, Iran imports most of the foods that people need. We all know how much price of foods have risen, and becoming more expensive day by day. Let us not forget, the use of fossil fuels in the future world, along with significant advances in the use of renewable energy, will cause fossil fuels such as oil and gas to lose their value. If we cannot invest from oil and gas revenues, to invest in finding a solution that future generations will face. Unfortunately, we cannot predict a good future for Iran. In fact, at that time, our country will not have enough income from the export of oil and gas sales, especially with the increase in world population, food will become scarce and expensive that time. Therefore, we must focus on how to solve the water problem forever and, more importantly, to use water for the development of our country. It was in these circumstances that the Omid Iran project was formed. Following, in brief, we will show how this project can be constructed. If anyone needs more information, please get in touch we will try our best to answer. In fact, this project can end the water shortage in Iran forever, so that with enough water in our country, we can be self-sufficient to produce necessary foods to feed our people. We will be able to export food and play a part in helping the world population to be fed. Let us not forget Holland, with 41,543 square kilometers, and a population of 17,440,000 in 2021. Producing food for export with a revenue of 94.5 billion euros per annum in 2019. This is almost equivalent to an annual income of oil and gas sales in our country. 
After we make 300,000 square kilometers of our desert and wasteland into agricultural land. And using the same agriculture technology from Holland, because of more sun, we probably can produce better quality food. With approximately an annual income of 700 billion euros. At the beginning of the project, we review, manage and direct rainwater and stored water in form of snow in the surrounding mountains in the development area. In order to achieve this, we survey the elevations surrounding the development area. Hence, direct and manage running water from the elevations to storage areas for use when needed for ecological or agricultural purposes. This method can greatly reduce the risk of floods in the lower regions. Therefore, in future, we no longer see the loss of life and property of our compatriots in times of heavy rain due to a lack of controlling and managing running water. The Omid Iran project will be completed in four phases. Phase 1. Delivering water from the Persian Gulf by pumping water through a combination of pipes and canals to the Jesmorian Desert and turning the Jesmorian and surrounding lands into an area for agricultural and tourism use, with a total area of 111,360 square kilometers. The good news is, phase one of the project will be solving the problem of the suffering people of our dear Sistan and Balushestan province. Phase two. Continue delivering of water through a combination of tunnels and canals from Jesmorian to Lut Desert and developing of 72,520 square kilometers of desert lands into agricultural and tourism. Phase 3. Continue delivering water from the Lut Desert to the Narmak Desert by way of combination of canals and tunnels. Developing 116,400 square kilometers of desert lands into agricultural, industrial and tourism. Phase 4. Delivery of water from the Narmak Desert to the Caspian Sea with a combination of tunnels and canals to control water fluctuations in this sea. According to reliable international scientific research, it is estimated that there is an annual water loss of 7 cm due to evaporation. Hence, we can preserve this sea for future generations. I would like to draw your attention to the end of this project. Iran will turn more than 300,000 square kilometers of desert land into productive and profitable land, and more importantly, move in excess of 100 billion cubic meters of water annually. In this animation, you will see how the Omid Iran project progresses, and the surrounding lands become developed into profitable agricultural lands and are expected to be used by farmers. From the third or fourth year, the project can increase the country's per capita income and produce permanent jobs. To find out how far the project goes each year and how many years it takes, I am sorry it is written in Parsi, but please pay attention to the box at the top right of the page. Here you can see the waterway. Where the waterway is shown in orange, it is made by pipe and water is pumped up, and where it's shown in turquoise the water is moved by a channel by gravity, and the dark blue water passes through a tunnel by gravity force. As you can see, lakes are being built in these areas that have several functions. First grow fish for protein. Second because of these lakes, they can attract tourists in these areas, which will result in many permanent jobs in fisheries and tourism, and the income of this region and the whole country will increase. Third, another positive point of performance of these lakes, they can attract migratory birds and will be a great help in reviving the environment. Also, we would preserve and improve the existing wildlife reserve on land, and will build more under the advice of environmental experts as they see necessary. Fourth, we can use the water from these lakes for agricultural purposes in times of emergency. Fifth, these lakes will lower the temperature around them and help plants grow on their banks and nearby, as a consequence wildlife could flourish. A larger lake will be in Lut Desert near Kerman, where tourism will grow specifically. Let us not forget another important task of this waterway is to inject water into Harmoon Lake in Sistan Baluchestan province, consequently, this lake is no longer dependent on the water of the Helmand rivers from Afghanistan. Under 17 points of United Nations Sustainable Development, this project was formed and goes much further to make sure this project after completion will last a long time. For that reason, six modern cities will be built for people and farmers to move to these areas. These cities will be equipped with all the modern facilities that any modern city needs, 
together with the latest technology in the field of renewable energy and communication and many more that the future modern city should have. Finally, this waterway, after passing under the Albors Mountains, enough controlled water is injected into the Caspian Sea through tunnels and canals to maintain the water level of the Caspian Sea. After the water passes through Albors Mountain, we use the height of 800 meters drops from Albors Mountain to go to the Caspian Sea, we will install a turbine in this area to generate electricity. This is a map of the agricultural land of Iran that shows the country's major crops, such as wheat, barley and rice, and how much of Iran's land is under cultivation, fruits and vegetables are not shown on this map. This is a map that shows Iran after 23 years when the project is completed, and when Iran becomes self-sufficient in agricultural products. In addition, Iran can export food and play a part in future to help feed the people of the world and proudly save many lives. Without going into too much technical detail about this project, we will show how the waterway canal is built. In addition, we will show how to desalinate seawater and how to leach out saline from the soil. If you would like technical information, please contact us by email which can be found at the end of this presentation. We will do our very best to reply. In past, due to the situation Iran has been, and was attacked militarily, and, because this waterway passes through some earthquake-prone areas, the rational way is to make this waterway in a prefabricated section and transport it to the installation site. This method has several advantages. Construction work proceeds faster and is cheaper. Thus, if a part of the canal breaks down, prefabricated parts can be used to repair the waterway quickly so that the agriculture of this region would not be endangered. The structures for this waterway, all to be calculated and built for earthquake protection. Bearing in mind, the majority of the waterway is built on the ground. This animation shows how the waterway is built and moving forward. This slide shows prefabricated canals ready and transported to be mounted on the canal supports. This slide shows the canals are lifted and fixed to their final position. This photo shows the prefabricated samples of the canal in the warehouse. Tunnel Many of you know or may have heard of the tunnel boring machine, or TBM. This is the modern day machine used to dig tunnels. It is directed by an operator that commands a computer to direct the TBM in the correct direction. In front of it is a huge disc with the same diameter as the external diameter of the tunnel. When this disc rotates it scratches the surface and directs the digging material to a conveyor belt, which transports it out. The prefabricated sections of the tunnel are installed at the back of the machine to the side of the tunnel to form the internal diameter of the tunnel. This is how the tunnel is built. So far, we have shown you with modern technology we can easily transfer water from the Persian Gulf to the dry plateau of Iran and from there to the Caspian Sea. But this water that is taken for agricultural consumption is salty sea water. Following, we will show a few examples of water purification methods used today around the world, and our proposed water purification method. This slide shows saline water entering a place called a distillation unit which is heated by direct sunlight. Or water can be heated from electricity produced by solar panels. In both cases, water is distilled and purified by the sun. After purification, water is directed to a place for use or storage. This slide shows the solar water distillation unit. Distillation happens by direct sunlight. The salt water enters the channel with a very shallow depth. Sunlight enters this closed sealed environment and greenhouse effect occurs. The untreated water in the channel absorbs heat, slowly reaching high temperatures. The heat causes the water to evaporate, cool, and condense into vapor, leaving the contaminants behind. Then droplets of water formed on the transparent sloped roof. This pure clean water will be collected and is then directed by collectors to be used or stored for later use. Another method to purify water is to use a clean source to distill water, by using solar panels to produce electricity to heat the water, which then produces steam, 
the steam is directed to a coil surrounded with cold water which also results in clean water. This is an example of the same solar water distillation used today in India and elsewhere. In India, many lands are suitable for agriculture, but the groundwater of these areas is salty and not suitable for agriculture. They are using the same water purification method to purify water today to assist and increase the agricultural goods. Let's see how much water we can purify with this purifier system. This photo shows the same system built in Iran before the revolution in 1977. I am sorry if the quality of the picture is bad, unfortunately, this was the only one left from that time. Testing a solar water distillation system with a dimension of 1 meter by 2 meters. As you can see this water purifier is connected to dirty water from the outlet of a kitchen in a construction workshop which at the time was under construction. This water purifier with 2 square meters was producing on a sunny day between 6 to 8 liters of dirty water that had to be discarded daily, which of course after the kitchen was built, was used repeatedly. In order to better visualize how much water this system is capable of purifying, if we use one square kilometer of land to be used for solar water distillation, according to the example shown in the previous slide, the amount of water was produced by that experiment, and using that data on a larger scale, it can purify between 3 million to 4 million liters of salty sea water every sunny day with very high quality purified water. This system works with the same principle as the previous solar distillation slide. Except it uses solar panels instead of direct sunlight. Solar panels are used to generate electricity and convert electricity to heat the water, but on a smaller land with a higher distillation rate. This is another example that shows solar panels can purify water in a smaller space. This is an example of using direct sunlight to purify water. This is a reverse osmosis system that is used in several parts of the world to solve the problem of water purification. The largest is in Israel with a capacity of about 228 million cubic meters of Mediterranean seawater treatment per year, followed by Bahrain with a capacity of about 200 million cubic meters treatment of the Persian Gulf seawater per year. Notice in the picture, seawater enters the filter with high pressure as a result the majority of salt from seawater is absorbed by the filter. But, some salt passes through the filter, hence, the treated water is not as pure as the previous system, unfortunately treated water has impurities. An important point has to be taken into account, this system is due to high power consumption and very costly water purification filters, this is very expensive to run and subsequently the cost of water to the consumer will be high. Another noteworthy point that we have to take into account. If we consider the newest and more advanced and efficient reverse osmosis seawater purification. Unfortunately, have the following weak point like the older type. Water enters the system for purification, 80% of that water will be purified, the remaining 20% impregnated with 80% of the salt taken from the seawater which usually returns to the sea. A high concentration of salt returns with 20% of the water will pollute the marine environment with more salt. Transformation of contaminated salt lands into agricultural land. In the agricultural ecosystems leaching is an important balance to prevent salt accumulation in soil. Assuming some of the desert lands is saline or polluted, we will show one of the methods that salty soil can be turned into agricultural land. This is a soil structure map of Iran which was prepared in 1959, since then changes may have occurred. The good news is according to this map most desert land can be cultivated, but suppose 100,000 square kilometers out of 300,000 square kilometers of land may be saline. We will show how salt can be leached out of the soil, using the same water successively, and prepare land to be used for agriculture purpose. This photo shows a piece of desert salt land. This picture shows how the ground is prepared by digging trenches next to each other to a depth of 1.7 meters or 2.2 meters with a width of 40 centimeters. As you can see, we lay prefabricated pipes that have many holes on one side. These pipes are connected to each other, with the holes on the top to form a closed network. 
These collector pipes collect the salt or contaminants from the water, and is then pumped out to be cleaned and reused repeatedly. The system of cleaning contaminated soil works in four steps. Step 1. Prepare the land and ensure the water cannot escape. Step 2. Next to the contaminated land construct a temporary clean water pond, and fill it with clean water. Step 3. Fill the prepared contaminated land that is prepared as shown in the previous slide and fill it with clean water. Once it has soaked in, it can then be collected by the collector pipes. Step 4. Construct an additional temporary pond for the contaminated water. This water is then pumped out into the temporary pond ready to be treated. Using the same method as described in the desalination section. Clean the contaminated water and use the clean water for the next stage of desalination. Consequently, we can repeat the same procedure without using lots of water. This method does not require much water for cleaning the soil and at the same time, we do not contaminate groundwater with more salt. After the ground is prepared for agriculture, it has a few advantages. The benefit of this system is, some agricultural products need to be sprayed with lots of water, some of which will go deep into the ground without being used by crops. The advantage of this system, we can reuse the water that would be wasted, which may have been probably, mixed with fertilizer. Here again, it has two other benefits. 1. If the ground is spread with organic fertilizer, plants that may reuse this water will grow better because it includes organic fertilizer. 2. If the ground is spread with artificial fertilizer, it will not contaminate groundwater, thus, it can be pumped out, clean, and reused. There are alternative methods that use bacteria to remove and clean the soil from the salt that will be presented to you by Dr. Yazdi after this presentation. Some of the salty lands can be used to cultivate crops that need salt to grow, such as pistachio, pomegranate and others. After studying the soil on site and adding various environmentally friendly chemicals that are commonly used, we then can grow a crop that is suitable for those conditions such as wheat, alfalfa, Bermuda grass, and a variety of other grasses to support livestock. For example, in Bangladesh successfully grow vegetable in semi-salted land. There are also some trees, such as date palm, honey locust, catalpa, coffee tree, cork tree, hawthorn and ponderosa pine or a variety of shrubs and bushes that can grow in saline soil. Many crops that are salt tolerant such as barley, camelina, rye, safflower, sunflower, cotton, and sugar beets can also grow in saline soil. A recent study in Holland proved successfully potatoes can grow in salty land, and another study in Iran reported they were successfully growing tomatoes in salty soil in a hot climate in the south of Iran. So far, we demonstrated using combination of crops and cleaning a salt from the salty land we can convert the land to productive land to produce food. Finally, this slide shows that there will be enough water for agriculture at the end of project. This project is based on the United Nations Sustainable Development Proposal. Here we will show you if the water distillation system shown above is used, we will be able to desalinate 60 billion cubic meters of water per annum for domestic, agriculture and industry use. With this amount of seawater we can produce about 2,100 tons of salt per year. Instead of disposing it and contaminating the land or Persian Gulf water, this project proudly plans to construct a salt separation plant to extract useful substances from seawater. This table shows the multiple uses of the substances can be extracted from the seawater. Subsequently, we will generate revenue to cover the costs of running this project. By doing this we will protect environment for future generations. United Nations has 17 proposals for sustainable development. The Ahmad Iran project will have 44 benefits in total to ensure that future generations of Iranians can live comfortably in our beloved country of Iran forever. We therefore, ask you to join this project and provide your expertise in the desired field. As a result, we will all help to build a better future for our country and the world. Please contact Madhavij Ziari, email omaduran2580 at gmail.com.
Yeah.